Hello, everybody. Welcome in. We're straight into this one, ladies and gentlemen. Let me yes, tell you, Counter-Strike on your screens immediately. We've had a hefty break there, so why not come back with the CS? Myself, Scriv, and Naokai, if you may be just joining us. If you were here earlier on, you know that Heroic beat out Preezy. That's what we saw here on the mainstream. And to beating out Meta's port as well. Really solid look from them. So kind of excited to get into this one. We're kicking off on Ancient. Hey, both teams struggled though, right? Meta's port took map number one, entered a reverse sweep, heroic, 9-3 curse, nearly cost them, but then blessed them as well. It was a very weird scenario. If you missed that earlier game, you missed out on a bit of a banger. 9-3, that heroic up on their pick of Vertigo, and then they didn't win a single round of that second half. And they start things differently here. Shush can take first contact with Carlo. One goes down immediately, and now it's a full five-on-five five retake, and it's got a lot of work to do. Yeah, this is a... Weird scenario to be in, it always is. Definitely never feels comfortable. Flash is coming around from both sides to try and create some space here, but Heroic are just giving them all that space at this point. Trying to bait them in. Mikado's on the PT-50, he's got Glock supporting him. It's a tap onto the bomb, but with no smoke, no hit, there's no real threat. They have to find the heads. Glaive looking to do just that. Oh my goodness, not showing any signs of slowing down. Unfortunately for Hades, his cover will be blown and Heroic will win the pistol. Cracking effort there from Glaive though. Three kills isolated. You take those every day of the week. However, I think the real thing that cost sense there is just the map control. You know, straight out towards the A site. Bomb goes down with no fights really being taken. Above, you know, a, a couple of taps through Temple. All things considered, I think uh, Hiroki give him maybe a little bit too much room to work with there. They make it work in their favor. We'll find that first. Ents are going to go for a force buy. Played on MP9, a few pistols alongside it. It's not exactly a nice buy to work with. They can convert this. Absolutely changed the tune of this map thus far. Deha has to support a glaive up close. These five sevens at close range, they could be problematic. Whoa, Deha gonna go wide, but it takes one into glaive. He eats that nade, however, goodness me. <laughs> a one for one trade. In the round, it's not the worst look in the world. He's out there, though. Keep really things even. So. We'll see what Heroic's response looks like right now. They have been scared off of B. Actually, unfortunate there for Glaive as well. That nade was meant to go into that kind of little door frame there, but instead it just misses, bounce off the wall. He's chunked down to 27. Exactly. The sort of luck you want this early into a game. Posted, waiting for a chance, missed shot. Let's take a tag. Hades, second time of asking, cracks open Shush's head. That's a beautiful response. And numbers now favor Ents on the force by, despite them only, for the most part, having upgraded pistols. Heroic. Time ticking, and they've got to make a decision. Shirts, of course, leading the pack here on the Lurk play. Big kill from him. Nikodar's also finding Glaive as they exit from middle. One plan comes around. This is where it gets a bit tough now for the CT side. The remaining CT side, anyway. Eagles swinging rounds, nothing going to come off. Uh, it's decent damage done. It is mm. decent damage done, all things considered, but Heroic will walk away with the victory. Exactly. That's all that matters. I think Enter making that closer than we probably would have expected. Kind of on the onset, coming in towards that round, but all things, you know, at the tail end of that round, all that we care about is the fact that Heroic have made it two for two. In those sort of rounds where you know you're coming against upgraded pistols, they can be a little perilous at times. Hopefully not the case here. Now low by friends. Heroic should get a 3-0 start. Well, too much sweat off the brow, so to say. Any consolation kills are always nice. Double P250, triple USPS. Expectations are minimal. It's a bit of a stack around that smoking towards mid. Might be a play to be had here. Big swing coming through. It's all making the way in towards mid. And Nerds can start to just isolate one by one. Find these fights. Nade from Tessus on the corner should be good. Chip damage, a second more of the same. Goofy or fall, and then one by one, has been dropped like dominoes here. Heroic are looking to close this one comfortably, but they will take at least a casualty. Glaive nowhere to be seen, unfortunately, so can't get involved in that action. But uh, yeah, as soon as you get the word comfortably out there, I think it becomes <laughs> uncomfortable for them, doesn't it? So Always um, the case. Well, just the way it goes, mate. The power of speech, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's definitely... Uh, an easy round for Heroic in the end. Glaive 
Just chilling over here, hoping that they're moving towards A. Now, unfortunately, they're going B. So this guy is uh, wrong place, wrong time, all round long, apparently. But taking some guns, getting some kill bonus. I think that's uh, something that's often overlooked with these sure. kills on the pistols. You know, it makes your personal buy into the next round a little better, a little more comfortable, less to worry about. You know, you maybe have a nade in a situation where you might have said... Oh, I'd love to have a nade right now, you know. So I, I think uh, that's often something that does get a bit overlooked. Yeah, exactly. You get Mac 10s getting a couple of kills as well. Really does add a lot to the tally. It was actually primarily rifles. You take, you know, the, the little bits of additional funds in the back pocket. Glaive, you're trying to look for any sort of upgrade, really. You, I don't think you'll get it. He's searching around for a gun. He's hoping to find I guess, something. To work with, but will not be the case. Harori can make it a third on the board again. Comfortably is all that matters. Hang on a second, though. Glaive, right idea. The exit here might get a shot at least. Damage on towards kicks and means that he does fall. You can take anything for ends. That's three casualties off the back of what was two PT50, uh, two PT50s, and two USBSs. You'll take anything in those sort of rounds, but now the first full buy. Our events goes without saying this one has to be converted if we want to start this narrative events putting up a solid ct side now for those who haven't seen that top right corner map picks are ancient and nuke to start things nuke being picked in by ent off the back of played earlier it's quite a ballsy one it has to be said see how that one pans out kicks out for the first kylo gets caught let's start indeed Decent for Heroic here, exactly what they would be after. Glaive getting aggressive by himself. Shadow definitely spotted, but he still wins the fight. Mechanically, since coming back, Glaive has looked brilliant, it has to be said. And completely out of character for what we'd expect from, you know, a 2018, 2019 Astralis player. But really, really solid. Hades finds nerds. Glaive posted, he might not be cleared here. And even though Nikodos looking in the right direction, he still can't out-aim the king. Glaive, like you said, since coming back, he's really looked like a, a man reformed, so to say. And the two remaining of Kicks and Shush have really got to dig deep in. A two versus four. Who's about to say it doesn't feel very possible, especially if Shush leave it spray like that. Glaive finds his third. And the last man of Kicks and the IGL gonna lead by example here, but this feels out of the realm as a possibility. For a catch. Timing was oh, almost there. That's as clean a one tap as you're going to get. Back till he reveals his position, and he is not fast enough to take out Goofy. Hence on the board early. And it is thanks to the big man. Again, continues to be impressive. And maybe something that, you know, teams have become a bit scared of. This guy with such a big brain is finding a resurgence into CS2 with the. Uh, his mechanical play, you know, you would say, oh, maybe there's a bit of a ceiling on it. Um, and I suppose there is, in a sense, quarterfinals at Kato, their sort of deepest run at the moment. But that's still pretty decent if you're relying on Gra Glaive to get your fracks, you know? <laughs> you can get Dihar behind it. You can maybe get Hades waking up a bit more. But I think he's just trying to, especially for a couple of the nine core, prove what can be done with a bit of belief. I, I, you know, let's not beat around the bush here that, that tail end of astralis he really didn't look himself right especially mechanically he was not putting up anywhere near the numbers that you'd want to see of what is you know considered one of the best igls of all time and is one of the most successful igls of all time man alive since coming back and you know th this really shows that when you kind of refine that confidence in a player how good they can look a confident glaive is such a scary prospect Actually, heroics buy here too. Double Mac 10 and a Galil on Shush. This is a bit of a haphazardly buy that actually could work mm. against them. Considering lose this, not only the ends make it a one round game, but they break the econs. So they should be able to tie it up. This could be a bit of a two for one special. If ends yeah, find round number five. I don't know, man. It, it looks kind of weird, minimap wise. You got four smokes <laughs> out from the T side early on. When they've got those weaker weapons. Hmm. It is a bit surprising to see them just lay down all that utility and not really do anything with it. Seems like Ents have got a pretty good read here that 
all that pressure with the uh, utility is kind of a fake out. But then they're going to pull the bomb away. So, questionable here from Heroic. A little bit in their own heads with this round, I think. Yeah, and the only thing as well, you know, leaving testers up towards shelf, trying to find rotations, or actually, more importantly, to get any information about what they've seen. And the answer's nothing. AD saw something. Nato come through. A little bit late, but at least gets a tag. So better than nothing. Double back through Donut. He goes to fight Kyle off backside. Cleared inefficiently. And he looks for more. He looks to isolate before the hand kicks on. This is a scrappy fight here on towards A. Might just work in favor of Heroic. Bomb gonna go down. Post bomb going to be set up. Three versus three. This is now doable. Yeah, this is a scary look for sure. However, they have given a lot of time across. A reposition coming in, but Diha will catch Nikodos. Two players on the reposition here, Neo. <laughs> Tessa's coming in behind, and Kixon moving in at Donut. They are somewhat savvy. Goofy deletes Tessa. And low HP Kixon, not much he can do. They were very ready for him as well. Hence, looking fantastic on the retake. That's really well done. Really solidly played. I think Heroic, they just spread out a little bit too much in terms of that post plant. Very little for them to work with the second they lose that control of the site as well then they realize they're actually on a bit of a timer they have to sort of rush that reposition and it costs them it really does a second friends and like we said finding a second here basically nets them a third as well considering heroic have only got pistols to work with big old opportunity now for friends to level the playing field three apiece and that would be huge but for heroic bomb one's nice this at least alleviates some of those financial pressures, but they know that it's not the time to force. Gave up close. We'll find one. Shush falls and he doesn't overextend. He just falls back. Smart play from him. Nice pickup from Kyle R. More for him. Ooh, lovely and clean there for the final two, especially. Just Mr. Nerds. And what do you know? He's on the other side of the map. Who'd have thunk? It's in his bones. Not really expecting too much out from this. So, yeah, just a sort of overarching picture. I think both of these teams and organizations would really, really want to secure that Dallas spot. Only a couple on the line, of course. Of course so quite yeah. a lot of confirmed teams, I think. Uh, maybe not as open as some of your other events within the circuit. But it would just be good for them, I think, ahead of 2025 in particular, to nail some of these final few events. Um, where it's not going to be quite as haphazard. I think the start mm. of 25, bunch of open qualifiers and whatnot as Valve are trying to push for, uh, is going to be quite chaotic. And you really will have to adjust to the online play. But no, agreed. Heroic events, I think, will want to uh, solidify their place among the top teams by that point. Nuts. He's desperately trying to get just something. Trying to get a uh, an isolated fighter. He's not being given anything. The biggest thing now, he has to die, right? <laughs> he has to try and fall, fall the timer. They might actually not face him. They're running away. Oh, this is brutal. There's nobody here to kill him. Oh, no. This is actually a terrible situation for Nerds. He survives off the time, which is the exact opposite of what he wants. And if he dies off the time too, it goes even worse. Oh, that is awkward. He'll only have two grand to work with. I think Enter played that really well. They kind of actually, in a weird way, give Nerds too much space, which is perfect. That's exactly what they wanted to do. He's running around like a headless chicken. They're not even facing. They don't allow him to pick up any rifles off any corpses either. So, all things considered, that couldn't really have got any better at the tail end. Nerds will have an AK-47 to work with. Drop over. I like to kick some GL. Uh, modest from him. He's good in the old fragging department himself, Kicksan, but... Knows what nerds can do. Get this man active. Can be a difference maker. Hang around as well. Nerds gonna try and make work in towards mid. Nobody looks like they want to test just yet. Certainly more mid presence in this game than there was in the previous from Heroic, that's for sure. sure. They were very, 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 very often just having nerds sit in at mid and try and find a timing. Or push in deep into the mid round. But a bit more presence from Ents in that sense means that they are scared. Nikodos will have feet further forwards, and he might have been a goner there. Shot missed. It's just damage at this point. Utility coming over the top. The Molotov does not quite reach Pilar, so therefore he's not forced into a fight. But he still opts to take one anyway. And Shush 
will find the double opener. That might just spell the end of it, and I think it does indeed. Or are they, yeah, unsure of Nerds at mid, probably. Makes sense. Plant coming in. And they're actually looking to stick around and maybe go for it. Hades falls. Dihar already deep in the action. Spotted out now. Shoes just playing around the corner. And the shadows. Reload comes out. He goes swinging. And everybody on the end side falls. Yeah. Really well done. Really, really well done in terms of the response. Considering kind of how we were saying, they're only coming in with, you know, their, their IGL coming in with just a deagle. To convert that with just the one casualty is not too shabby. Now we do look at kind of the response out of ends. Thankfully for them, they do have money. Orbs can be picked up as well. Now, Heroic were unwilling to pick up the orb all that much until that previous game. They were more than happy just utilizing the rifles. Nikodos, we didn't actually see it all too often from him. I just got to try and test that of Hades. And everyone's going to go quick. Out towards A. Nobody's home. The red carpet rolled out to a free site. And now they're playing retake again. But Carlos going to fall through the smoke. Bomb goes down. And a retake in shoes with only three remaining alive. Oh, for Ents, they might just go to save immediately. Man alive. This is crumbling quickly. Hades solidifying the save, I feel like. But yeah, round is just not going to happen. Heroic moving up to five and... Picking up steam where Ents were really battling in those early stages. It has slipped. This is slightly. It is the way it goes from time to time. If they can survive with all three here, then I think they'd be in a happy position. Nerds, though, is ready and waiting. Maybe even going to look in for a fight once this bomb goes off. Close. Terrorists win. Swing? No, the answer's no. No, he doesn't. That'll be all she wrote. And very early say that Eha and Kyla both fall so quickly. Uh, you know, we saw this happen on the pistol round, and again, now it happens to the rifle. This is showing at least one fundamental weakness over towards ends. That A site hold is not exactly what they want. There's question marks about how you then try and adjust to this. Do you then try and play a little bit more proactive in towards A main? Or do you actually give it up completely, but then don't even test as the bomb goes down? Wait for the smokes to fade and play for the full five on five. It didn't work in the pistol. I'm going to go quick A again. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Quick out towards A. Nobody here. A smoke going to come through over towards Donut. And again, they get a free sight. Surely something's got to change here, friends. Yeah, it's a little unacceptable even at this kind of a stage, to be honest with you. They might stick around for this one, though. They are all here quite fast. Tag lands from the orb there. Nurts, meanwhile, lurking in towards mid. Dihar is holding for it, but only on an MP9. That is no guarantee that he will win the fight. And there it is. Nurts takes him. And they start to call a bail here from the end side of things. Looking a little uncomfortable, if I'm being honest. Oh! Smoke, beautiful. But yeah, it just seems like the decisions, they're in two minds at the moment. Not sure whether to stay or go or fight or don't. Buy or don't, you know, they're, they're really messed up these few rounds. I think you need to take a time out at this stage, honestly. I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. I wouldn't mind seeing end coach call for a pause. Just take a breather. You know, in my opinion, one of the best coaches in the scene that are Cuban on their side. Somebody who is... Very experienced in these sort of situations. We saw what this guy can do, and there it is. You're a prophet, Scriv. You've called it. That time I'm going to be called here by Ents. At a time for a conversation. It goes without saying, needed. Something has to change. Heroic have just noticed there's zero presence through him. And we've seen once Glaive go aggro on a bit of a half by against pistols, where he played up close, found one, and fell away. And then, uh, apart from that, the gun rounds, Ents not doing anything towards A. The traditional way in which a lot of people play it is one through Donar who actually fights mid, one playing anchor towards A, whether they're playing in through Temple or actually close Donar as well, inviting that pressure. And the two guys through Donut retake. There's a, there's a few different ways you can go about playing it. All things considered, Ents have got to start thinking about the way they should play it because this A site is looking very vulnerable and it's allowed Heroic to, at the bare minimum, get a tie game at the turn of the half. And the way they're playing right now, probably a couple more. Lave, aggressive, up to shelf. Big kill for him on a round like this. 
Look that they get aggressive. Something a bit different. Hades, with the contact play, is faster than Nika does. And all of a sudden, we might just be on heroic. I would imagine as well, with an M4 and an AWP, don't quite know what they're up against. Hades manages to survive, and it's Dihar on the 5-7 that cuts them off over on A. Oh my goodness, of all the weapons to do it, it has to be the 5-7 and heroic. They slip. Well, I said they need to change something, right? I said they need to do something over towards A. They stick a 5-7 up close, and at that angle, one tap headshot is the possibility. It's working so damn well. Last man of kicks and big ass for him. He might get caught on timing regardless. Oh, a little messy. A little labored. We'll get the kill nonetheless. Anywhere he goes now is a risk. Hades posted with the orb, glaving towards shelf to hold rotation. Smoke comes out towards long. Flash trying to force Hades off the angle, and he will actually be caught by it. Second swing and a fine down goes Hades. This is not impossible, but it's highly improbable. And a Molotov on the toes is not going to help. Swing. Down goes Glaive. 1v2. Time is of the essence, but he got 20 seconds to work with. At the very least, there's a possibility. Tap on towards the bomb. On a stick as he invites in the fight. And he fights here. Yeah. Surely not. Kicks on. Has made something out of nothing. Kyla, a massive sigh of relief. It's a round one, but my oh my, that was way closer than it should have been. And they know that shouldn't have been that expensive. Damn, okay. <sighs> yeah, it's definitely heating up here. You can feel that there is a lot more energy in this game than perhaps our first, you know, both these teams able to play to such a high standard. And they are really digging into that now. They want to confirm that spot in the upper final. And get one step closer. Oh, to Dallas. These flashes are just so wild. It looks great, didn't it, for a second. Then we're in. Nerds out in the open. And then suddenly the flash out of nowhere just saved his life and actually netted a kill for him. Nearly even two. Unbelievable stuff on the timings there in towards mid. Kixan will catch Hades. He misses an AWP shot. Meanwhile, Mr. Nerds, his favorite place to be, will spot the peripheral shadows to find that frag. Just Glaive and Kylar all of a sudden. Two remaining. What do you do, right? Kylar so low and Glaive not exactly healthy. Should be heroic. Final that seven. Already guaranteeing a lead. The T side of Ancient is not a bad position to find yourself in. Bomb. A long old rotate towards eight. There's nobody home. So they will get that plan or the post plan and the round one in a matter of moments. The question more looks towards likes of Tessa. Sticking around towards B in that cubby. If you can get any kind of kills at the tail end here, this could really have a bit of a damper on the mood. There's not a lot of money for Ents to work with into this final round of the half. Any exit frags, any hunt calls here could be incredibly dicey. Very perilous. And there's one already. Carlo will fall. So will Glaive. And now look what it means towards Ents. It's Heroic who have found a seven. And Ents who have got so little to work with. Buying here is going to be so damn tough. I mean, Kyla can get a rifle, and that's about it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the difference between three or four rifles if they'd uh, work the economy out and yeah. um, one. So, <laughs> really, really big deal. Decent from Heroic once again. It's not quite as impressive as some of their halves put up against Creepy, but that uh, is to be expected. A trial by fire in the first one. A game of streaks. A game of mixed emotions. Seems to have done them some good. Keeping themselves absolutely in the right headspace. He does not quite make it past the door, but uh, that was the intention, right? That, that's what that nade was supposed to do. Ends. Trying to sort of learn from their mistakes as well. This time grouping in the direction of eight. Will be a rotation off, though. Are you going to double back as he joins the group at B? The bomb's being left in spawn. Now, this, I like this from Rorik. They're going to look for any fights here, but not overcommit. Worst case scenario, we'll be dropping the bomb up close to, like, to five sevens or anything of the sort. 
And look here, Glaive gonna sit up close. MP9 at this sort of range can be brutal. And the fact that he has the support as well of Diha, one of which can play anti. This could work for them. The bomb's gonna come back over, and there's three people here to meet them. They've not gonna spot anything on the cross as well, though. It does get one. At the very least, Shush can hold down the four. He will get caught by Hades. This is a really scrappy fight that could work against Heroic here. Yeah, this is scary. Molotov will push Goofy out of position into a fight, in fact, that he wins. He's traded no. quickly, but Kylo is here to back them up. They weren't expecting him. You know, they were expecting two, but not another. Hades, meanwhile, other side of the map, dropping kicks and nerfs, does not know where to look, and he was absolutely dead to rights as he commits in. Seven to five, some clutch rounds in places from Ents, but a lot more consistency from Heroic. We'll see who takes this first map after the break. Hello, everybody. Welcome back in 7-5 at the turn of the half. And as I mentioned, with some clutch rounds in there towards the end to bring it as close as they possibly could. It is a rope's uh, map pick here. Mm. We'd expect big things out of them from the CT side. Didn't quite see that in their previous game against Prezi, though. So there are some vulnerabilities here if Ents can find them. It's true. It's very true. One of the vulnerabilities for Ents' CT side was the A site. And they want to... Uh... Give Heroic a bit of a taste of their own medicine. That's where they're going to head here. Got the util. So they come down from Kicksand. Anti flash being played by Shush. And Kicksand both get deleted. Very quick pop towards A. The site's theirs. Yep, super, super effective. Really well played on the utility from Ensign. Brave with it as well. Moving through a smoke. Took that as their marker to go. Just works out perfectly. And I mean, 
What can you really do from here? Saving in the pistol is a bit mental for me. <laughs> I agree. But heroic. Just not fancying it. Yeah, sometimes, I, you know, if one player wants to save against five and he's got armor, you know, maybe a kit, maybe a P250, things like this, then I can kind of see it. But saving with three, the speed at which pistols can turn around, I don't know if I can agree with that. We'll see. We'll see what the players... Uh, you know, my only assumption is, like, maybe saving armor to buy into, you know, like an MP9 or something here. That's the only thing I can really think of. They're going to maybe try and force buy around it. Anything I can think of. Yeah, okay, that's what we're going to go for. Armor so they can go into the MP9s. I have a bit of util to work with. It's, I guess, better than nothing. It is a bit of a risk, though. You, know, you look at kind of heroic here. Lose this round. Not only do Ents tie the game up seven apiece, but they should be able to get a bit of a two for one. Get the round after as well, because the econ of heroic will be in the gutter a bit. We'll see. Definitely a... Uh, Bit of a risk. That MP9 is all they can wield up close. Shush gets deleted. It's already not a great start here. Carl to find the first. He looks for more. It's Nurt at range of an MP9. He's going to try and get up close. He's caught by a double flash. The guy can't see anything. Yeah, man. This is vicious from Ents. Absolute aggressive attack, really. Just very, very confident, I would say, from the end side of things. Um, but it was all. A fake out. That's what that first kill can do for you in such quick fashion. Especially with an AK in a round like this. That's a little nuanced thing. I don't even know if they've read all that deep in, but it's just sort of psychological of like, ah, oh, there's an AK. It must be an A play. It was in fact B. The aggression coming forwards takes out Goofy. A little recovered, but I would imagine another save here from Heroic. This one yeah. makes a bit more sense. Exactly. Keep out of a glill, double MP9, especially considering... They will have no money to work in next round. Understandable. The only other thing as well, just make the thing over. Should be fine. The save is a sports position. One of those weird ones where for both teams, they know where each other are, but it's not going to make a difference. Terrorists that win. will be the round. All side square. At the very least, Heroic have something to speak of in towards the next round. Double MP9, a Galil, and a 5 7 is workable. And Shush could even pick up his own 5-7 here. You may as well give yourself a chance. There we go. Going to get it. Actually, going to be dropped over by Nerds. So, seven apiece. Ents. Good conversation at the gates in towards the second half. And a firepower as well in towards this next round. So, opportunities are there for Ents to take that lead. The, the very least there's something to work with for heroic. So I'm gonna count them out in this round. No, it's gonna be in trouble though. Caught with a flash, but definitely double away in time. Oh my goodness, another messy round here from these two teams. It is absolutely what they are all about. Flattened in at mid though. That's gonna be a big, big difference maker here. We've got rotations round from the heroic boys. To remain in the action, and trap them in towards B. Nikodos and Shush. Ooh, for the aggressive moves. Barrel spotted. Hades not messing around. Shush, however, has upgraded himself both a pistol and a rifle. They'll know his position. They'll smoke him off. They'll get this bomb down. But that does by no means mean that they have secured it. Shush. Should start to become a known quantity now. Bit by bit. Doesn't have a kit to work with. That smoke is aptly placed, though. Right into the danger zone. The bomb is planted for them, yes, but... Oh, we got a bomb off with the smoke. Reload and a tap on towards the bomb. Looking for the last as well. Kylo not showing his face. Not giving them a fight. That smoke's probably going to fade before the defuse comes off. So Kylo just biding his time. His time starts to stick. Sticking it in as well. And Kylo's going to find it with barely a couple of seconds left on that defuse. Ends win it, but my God, are they made to work for it. Goodness gracious, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I think he also thought that smoke was going to go down, but we're maybe subconsciously trained on the old timers. Of course, they do last a bit longer here in two. But yeah, hella close, hella, hella close. Every single round, each drop of sweat just squeezed out of it, you know? Really coming close in a lot of these situations, even on those low buys. Very important round as well. 
over and to close that in their favor. Just to reassure themselves. Close, but finding it's all that matters. Back into the investment. Nicker does. Posted. He's the one to win out the fight, Hades. Just half a second too slow. Nicodar's going to take one of those opportunities every day of the week. The opener. That's the way heroic. Kicks out and gets caught. He actually gets tagged up directly. Either Molly he gets out. Just in time. Big prime from Shush. That puts heroic in a really solid spot now for the eighth round. See what Ents are able to dig up on their T side. Not really getting too much at this point, are they heroic? I think um, need this one. Yeah. They absolutely know that. And they're not taking any chances right now. Yeah, for sure. All posted, Nikodos. Just dance between the two angles, but Dia has crossed here. The time of play is a possibility, but Glaive gets caught. Now for Dia and Kyla, what is the call? Is there even a call, right? In a 2v5, savings are the worst case in the world. They don't have a lot of money to work with. They can't buy next anyway. So having a double AK to work with is better than nothing. And that is going to be the case. With 10 seconds left on the clock. They're just tail between their legs, backing it up. Keeping these AKs alive. And that is going to be heroic answering right back. Tying this game up again. Eight apiece. We have got a game on our hands here. First map of the series. And neither side giving up an inch. The most important thing there, Heroic. First of all, Nikodos getting active on the AWP. Always good to see. But on top of that, the fact that it's such a comfortable round two, very little sweat off the brow, that's the sort of round we want to see out of Heroic. This is a really good response. And they're going to squeeze together and fall by, but it's not exactly a pretty one. Double AK, of course, saved. Lil, Tech Knight, and a Mac 10 to round it all out. Not impossible this round, but it's not going to be easy. Oh, really nice nade there. Kicks and takes a peek, spots some players out as well. Not looking to stick around. There is a boost up here from Kylar, and nobody presenting heroic. Much nervier in this round. Kicks and takes a peek. Oh, it's risky. So much damage done, to be fair to him. No kill comes off, and this is what happens. Tessis now has to perform. Moving out for another has been spotted by Hades. Flash comes in, though, and it's absolutely perfect. If only he had a few more bullets, he could have committed to that fight. However, man advantage, looking good. Bomb down at the feet of Heroic. Now what as well? Goofy, playing up close red room. Second, yes, he what? Swing. A little dicey, a little dicey, but Nurse going to find it nonetheless. That's the uh, Tech 9, too tall in order. Really, really well done. Heroic, claw back a lead. Ninth on the board, a one round buffer zone over ends, which should realistically be doubled here. With a low buy out from the T side. And this is huge. Not only they're finding the rounds now, but they're making them comfortable too. That's exactly what we want to see. Heroic. They're on the path now. It's taking this map number one. And so we'll probably know that pressure's starting to mount on their shoulders. Flash coming round for Heroic there to get control of lane. They'll spot nobody. So that does give them a good idea that it is potentially an A player, especially with mid control. Nice find from Shush on that orb. Nade going down, not able to find any more, but, you know, he's distracted away for Nerds to come in from the side, gets his pistol out, and leaves Dihar all alone to just find one. That's all he wants here. He's trying to draw somebody in. Ooh, Nika does 2 HP. But he can't get it. Close. Give him the credit there. But no cigar. Oh, well, again... Crossroads now. We find ourselves within heroic first side to crack in towards double digits, but Ents, it's all about this response. If they want a chance, they haven't got too many fall buys to work with. Realistically speaking, maybe two. Things continue on the same trajectory. I think Ents know they haven't really got much room for mistakes anymore. A lot of them are coming towards elbow. Actually, air bursts. 
So Goofy giving this coverage for free. The monitor must have caught a clipping on the wall or something. Airburst will actually make that a little bit more awkward. Nerds drop a nade. Does a chunk of damage. But now Heroic have lost mid. And they'll know this. So they have to fall back on towards the site. And they really can't afford to re-aggress into it. Just such a mess at the moment. Shush though. Big kill from him. It's short-lived. Goofy, meanwhile, creeping up. Watch. Oh, and the patience from Nikodos will pay off. Not jump in the trigger. So, man advantage now for Heroic. Looking pretty good, in fact. And so, just slowed it down. And trying to play a quieter game. A contact-heavy game. That... Well-timed smoke really does make life awkward, but Tessa's not necessarily watching the smoke. We are unsure. Should he go through? Should he wait? And I think they are going to play the patience game. He spoke towards long. Tessa. Well, made up. Well, the timing. He's pulled the pin, but he hasn't thrown the nade just yet because they're waiting for this flank to come through. That's the bomb. Hades has fallen. Now they've got to do a recovery mission. C4 collected. The rotate is perilous because a double swing should see it off. It's Glaive all alone. The IGO going to lead by example here in a 1v4 turn 1v3. And surely, surely out of the realms of possibility. Hades. Him falling with a bomb cost them a lot in that round. Glaive, that was just impossible, wasn't it? There was no chance. That's a three round lead picked up by Heroic. Now, well and truly on the path to closing out their map pick. We spoke about Ancient maybe being a little bit of an inherent risk, right? Considering mm. map number three wasn't exactly pretty against Freezy. It took a while for them to get going. You know, 9 3 down, they found themselves in that first half and they had to claw it back tooth and nail. It's been a much more solid performance and unified performance from Heroic. You've at times looked like they have some pretty distinct problems in the way the synergy of this roster seems to be set up. Slow walk up into A here. And Shus is just chilling with the Molotov. Gets it down quickly. I think it'll really make too much of a difference. Smoke on top. That certainly will slow them down now. And ends. Maybe giving their game away a bit heavy there. A lot of utility spent, but a lot of utility left. All just quiet. Minute to work with. What is the play here? Friends, a lot of reliance upon two individuals of Glaive and Goofy in this one to try and find something. But a forced buy is you know, its a risky call. It goes without saying, this isn't all chips to the middle of the felt. This is the all-in poker call. All these anecdotes we like to say, it's now or never. This Hail Mary has to pull off if they want a chance in Ancient. Shadow spotted. Flash will come through. The second as well. Might catch the man on towards map. Kyla finds the first and the second. Heroic letting this one slip. Tess is on to black, but it's still not by any means done. Oh, that was the big moment. Tess has had to find another and just buy some time. For the orb to come round. Nikodos has actually found a gap. Bomb plant denied. Three smokes for him to walk through here. Absolutely mental, but there's not much that he can do from that position. They do have plenty of cash, so it's fair to go for it. But yeah, Heroic. Uh, dropping the ball ever so slightly. Two funky angles taken. Uh, maybe only one should have been taken. Either way, it costs them and ends staying alive. Yeah, they needed that. They absolutely needed that. We said that round was an absolute Hail Mary call there by Glaive. And it goes without saying, if you want any chance to turn the tides, change the wind, no sails. It had to come in that sort of weird and wonderful round with that sort of buy. And they do. Smoke gets broken by Nertz's nade. It's behind it. Just get a tiny tag, but it's not exactly what you're worried about. Looks like Kicksham will take a tag himself on the spam, but the thing to consider is a much slower round of the upset fight. Control taken. Working in through mid and shelf. Not committed to anything just yet. Similar setup as the previous round here for the Relic. So hoping to make that work. And meanwhile, again, 
playing the contact style, starving of info style. Only really one player at a time making noise is part of the plan here. But if anyone goes peeking in, there's actually two or three, so an easy trade is possible. Part of logic here. Shadow spotted. Nico does kind of just in time. Takes a tag of his own. Nade will finish him off. Oh no, that's not good for heroic now. He's just all alone on A, and this might be part of the plan. Hades contacting in towards mid. Big kills here, but still shoots to deal with. Could get good timing. Spots one, spots the second. Kyla left low needs his teammates to help him out. Shush is going to know that. He's looking to close the gap and get control of somewhere. Just one little spot, and he will indeed do it. Bomb down as well. Oh, it could be beautiful. We'll see what else can Shush get. He denies. Oh, no, he doesn't. Glaive stays alive. It's Tessus who came in for that frag. Two versus one for the in-game leader on 11 HP. Only a few seconds, and unfortunately, nothing he can do. After time, he goes down as well. What a move from Shush. Yeah, from bad to worse, right? Just the fact that he goes down half the time means that Glaive has so little to add to the finances and to the uh, the firepower, so to say, in this one. Triple AK, Kylar, and unfortunately Glaive don't have that luxury. It will be a Tech 9, smoking a flash, no armor for Glaive. That's not going to help. A lot of reliance on this rifling core here. Got to try and do something to dig ends out of this hole because Rubik is so close to closing out this map. And honestly, deservedly so as well. The way they played these last few games, Hades spammed down through the wood. It's not the start they would want. The thing is as well, you know, neither Kylon nor Glaive have armor. So if one of those rifles gets even lower HP. It's not exactly like you can drop it over to somebody with armor like they usually do. You may as well just keep it on Hades. Surely not going to get away with this. Yep, taken down. Heroic. It seems they are back when it matters most. Mm. So now only four remaining and, you know, it's up Hades. It's not ideal, is it? Tessus, he keeps on fragging here as well. It's disastrous. But kicks down. Yeah, he's going to come round. Catches one reloading, nearly finishing off the second. Goofy trying his absolute damnedest to keep them in this game. Nika Dawes back end of B. Could be massive. Could be a round ender, a game ender. We'll see. Does posted, deleted. Falls to the hands of Hades. Now this one's interesting. Nerds rotating his way round. Not easy, but both Goofy and Hades are low. Goes without saying, this is a possibility. The only worrying thing is has no information. He doesn't have the right util for this either. No smoke, no molly to clear angles. Just a double flash and an aid. Has to take raw angels swinging through as well. Running out of time. Goofy Mac falls on aid, but it doesn't really matter. Hades sees it off. We are still alive. 10 to 12. We find ourselves in quite the interesting little uh, impasse here. 10 to 12. Unfortunately, just as we hit that margin, we do hit a tech pause. Looks like someone has dropped out of the server. Hopefully we can get them back in and right back into the action. But it still feels like anyone's game. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's what we wanted from these uh, guys is to provide a matchup that had that kind of competition behind it. That's mm -hmm. definitely what we're getting. Some big rounds, some big moments, some turnarounds and everything. You know, it is a really, really great matchup here, obviously. And um, they're delivering on that heroic. Looked shaky against Preezy. And Entz also looked shaky against Metis Poor. It's kind of nice that... They have a game to open up. They both won. They face off against each other, but they're a little warm. Maybe some of those uh, mistakes, the server rust, as it were, not played for a little while, especially in an online sort of setup, um, seems to be sorted now. So, yeah, very, very cool indeed. But really hard to call. Really hard to call who uh, is going to take this one. It felt like Heroic with that previous round had a pretty good chance to do so. Opening kill against the low buy. What else do you need? And apparently they need a bit more, I suppose. Yeah. And of course, we didn't really touch on it too much so far this series, but while we do have the tech pause, it's probably a better time than any to kind of talk about the veto for this series. Of course, this is Heroic's pick of Ancient. On next up, it's Nuke picked by Ent. And if we need it, our decider is that of Overpass. So this one on paper looks like it's all written in the fact that we will go towards a three-mapper. 
But who knows, right? I mean, this could still go towards OT. We could still see a little bit of life left in into the tail end. Heroic, you know, on Nuke. They're no slouches on that map by any means. But the expectations when you look at it on paper and you look at the statistics of both of these two sides, especially over the last few months, this has always been a little bit of a better map um, down of Ancient towards Heroic. On the flip side, Nukes is a little cleaner. You know, Glaive really knows how to call that one. And he's played very well individually. Then on towards Overpass, it kind of feels like anyone's game. Yeah, I'd be inclined to agree, but we'll we'll see. Obviously, Heroic had a really great map uh, earlier on on Nuke, so there is certainly a chance that they could tap into that again if they can pick up the victory here, that maybe they can go in um, with a little less pressure. That might help them out, but we'll see. This one is definitely not secured just yet. An unfortunate drop out there has taken some of the wind away from Ents. This one should give it back, however. A couple P250s, and that's all. Not the greatest buy or start. Sure, she's lucky man to stay alive. Just a couple around that corner. A lot. Little does he know he's got the absolute right idea with the spam here. He still is going to play up close. If they can catch a rifle off guard, there is a chance. Goes without saying, we're not expecting basically anything in this round, but. Any couple of kills, you know, considering how rough and ready kind of enters economy is itself, kind of out of, out of uh, the possibilities here. No, I suppose not. Spam through the smoke. Not really finding too much from the USB, as to be expected. Be close. Mob plan going to come in. They're just trying to see how they'll react to it. No movement really from heroic. Decent nade goes round. Actually, finds the kill. Kylar goes swinging in to his death. But at the very least, he's collected the information. And with that bomb going down, you feel like this one should be all but over. A little unfortunate on the timing there for Boost. Dehard does have to watch out. Pops up to an AK, but I think they'll be happy to just let these three players survive, to be fair. And no more funny business. Well. And he's just making sure there's no real issues at the tail end. Nursing off. That'll be that final round in regulation. What is there to work with? 11 to 12. And Heroic hoping to close it out. They've had, you know, a couple of opportunities to do so. And thankfully, before they go in towards the all-important kind of final round of this, uh, of this second half, they're going to have a conversation, bring Saw into it and see what he's seen thus far of course good opportunities well for cuban too this is so important for Ents. it feels like for a long time these guys have been playing catch up you know, two rounds down at the halfway point and always been trying to claw it back consistently in their favor and now is the best opportunity to do so if they can push it towards overtime that's what we start to say that maybe momentum might swing back the other way the question is of course for heroic had a lead at the turn of the half. Looking to lock it out, head towards Nuke. Pretty confident. They go towards overtime. That might shake them up a little bit. Possible. Very possible. Okay, here we go. Utility down early on. Keep them at bay. In at mid seems to be the heroic MO here. And it definitely has worked. Just got to be careful with how they keep hold of this position. Nerds. Oh, he's blinded up. Not fully. And that makes all the difference because he finds two. Tessus who's there to support. Huge, huge kills from Nerds. And that might just be enough. But we'll see. We'll see. This has been an Ents team that has absolutely turned these rounds upside down from a number of seemingly losing positions. Oh, well, on the back side, shush. Tried to catch Kyler off guard, but he can't, but Nurse is back. Two versus four, one versus four. Sadly, the idea was nice, but I think it's out to the realms of possibility, or maybe not. Hades 1v4 to 1v2. Bomb collected, but no idea where the remainings are. Looks for kicks on a Tessus. He's got plenty of time. Yeah, he can do a whole number of things here. They've pulled together as well. Just looking to watch if he goes B or mid, right? They know he's on A. Let's let him have that. 
He could have run all the way towards B, but that would be a bit of a wacky thing to do at this stage. So it's well read, well eliminated here by the uh, young boys. Hades. Ten seconds left, and they're now starting to encroach on towards the A-bomb site. He's going to go in for the hold, and he's just spammed down in the end. We're robbed of the potential one versus four, but Heroic will indeed secure Ancient. Only just, only just, mind you, when they were in a pretty clean position um, towards the sort of last 20% of the rounds possible, let's say. Mm. We felt 12-9, they should have been able to get it done. It gets a bit more costly. There is a timeout in there as well, which adds a bit more.